which is rare situation. But w w w as far as I remember, if the instance is very low, but there are some cases of unex unexpected eosinophilic myocarditis or um, the giant cell myocarditis. And uh, what about your any specific? Mm, uh, uh, Usually, I saw the uh, dilate, dilate, uh, the pathology of the dilated cardiac myopathy, uh, non-specific pathology finding, <laughs> just as degeneration, or focal myocardial infarction, or fibrosis, or more so as. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we will go for, uh, proceed uh, examining the specimen. Would you please show the specimen from the from behind together? Yeah. This is. Uh, Resect, remove the heart from this patient, 62-year-old man, and this is normal heart to compare. So uh, this is, uh, as you can see, it's a very big, great big, and the HR uh, uh, wall is removed to, uh, due to some uh, surgical procedure. So what I'm going to do is that uh, we, there are two uh, general principal way to cut the heart specimen. For example, if you want to make a uh, left and right comparative uh, images of the wall thickness, we can make uh, this kind of section so that uh, left, right ventricular inflow and left ventricular inflow together can make uh, this guidance of the forceps to have this cut together so that we can easily compare these two uh, chambers in one plane. The uh, disadvantage of this procedure is that we can miss many uh, minor re regions in this area. So I, I would uh, recommend to cut the short axis section for uh, serial short axis section for this specimen. But when we cut short axis, this is not the right, right way to cut this. Because the short axis doesn't mean that in uh, right angle to the inflow, but it is uh, right angle to the outflow. So uh, from aorta to uh, left ventricular apex can be probed like this. And then we should cut in, in the right angle of the left ventricular outflow track. So that the, this is the long axis of left ventricle and the right angle to the uh, long axis is short axis view. So uh, in general, we can cut more uh, right ventricle left and left ventricle, uh, smaller left ventricle left, and then cut. if you cut this way, we can see round shape of left ventricle. So I'll cut this way like. So the short axis is nicely uh, prepared to, to see uh, left ventricle and right, uh, right ventricle together. And also there is a, the mitral anterior leaflet and anterior lateral papillary muscle, posterior medial papillary muscle in this shape. Um, the, the, one of the questions from the panelists was that how we can fix the heart in an ideal way. The answer is that the, in this specimen, the pathologist put the uh, sponge or, or some tissue paper in, in each chamber so that to make a, a, a shape of the heart uh, as it is and then fix, fix in formalin so that the, the, the shape of the chamber is not distorted but is, uh, is in the uh, ideal shape. So as you can see, as you can imagine, examine, we can see details of the cut surface. So uh, whether there is any uh, regional fibrous lesion or not. So for example, the, if it is an uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy, we can expect endocardial fibrosis, subendocardial fibrosis along the uh, wall of the left ventricle. But as you can, and also, it makes uh, major papillary muscles become smaller with fibrous rim, so that it uh, uh, is very much expected for ischemic type. Although there is no coronary arterial region, but if it is subendocardial ischemia, it can be fibrosis uh, in the endocardium. But it's very clear there is no uh, uh, ischemic region. But there are still some 
uh, focal fibrotic lesion, so uh, we, we can examine that, uh, whether th that is a, uh, a kind of sequelae uh, of sarcoid sarcoidosis or something like that, so that because the sarcoid the cardiomyopathy can be a, uh, uh, remaining some focal fibrotic lesion uh, scattered and so on. So, um, so the, uh, after this, this, uh, sectioning like this, we can proceed further to the apex and uh, from the, to the base. So the other advantage of this kind of sectioning is that because I'm very much like uh, arrhythmia uh, pathology, I, uh, I often to examine this part, which is uh, septal leaflet of tricuspid valve, anterior superior leaflet. So if you cut this part, we can examine AV node and conduction axis together with left bundle branch and, and so on. So uh, this initial cut can make this uh, sec uh, next step examination of the conduction system possible. Uh, possible. And then, of course, we, we need to continue to cut this uh, remaining part in, in a way to have a parallel So, because the uh, clin uh, clinicians usually ex uh, look at the heart from the apex, so it's better to take picture for clinicians so that we can put ex uh, take picture from this way rather than take taking picture the other way around. So this is a uh, procedure, and I'd like to give some uh, a more. Uh, gift to the audience so that I would like to cut in the same way to the normal heart to compare with this same specimen. Would you cut? <laughs> okay. uh, so the idea is that cutting, uh, probing from aorta to left ventricular apex and cut the uh, heart in short axis right angle to, to the, to the uh, probe. Okay, good. So now we are comparing these two hearts. So is there any? I think it's uh, <laughs> uh, 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 almost uh, uh, standard clear to make, uh, see the difference. But we can see the difference by uh, having a right ventricle apex uh, chamber in thin wall chamber with volume chamber and the left uh, compared to uh, this left ventricle in this shape and so on. So uh, th this is the, our uh, standard procedure. So uh, uh, can, uh, I think I can ask you uh, the uh, transfer our microphone to uh, chairperson to continue discussion. Uh, is there any questions from panel desk? For the the, spec the abnormal specimen, is that considered LVH? For the patient with the dilated myopathy, is there also left ventricular hypertrophy? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, dilated uh, myopathy uh, doesn't mean dilated uh, thinning of the wall due to the dilation, but, but it is because the hypertrophy and dilatation. So the uh, myocardial mass of this left ventricle is much bigger than uh, that altogether. Although uh, in this particular case, 
uh, left ventricular wall is rather uh, more hypertrophied uh, than usual case. But I think it's uh, fixed in uh, a permanent, I mean, a fixation. So it would have uh, changed from its uh, original shape. Uh, I don't know because I haven't seen the original <laughs> shape. <laughs> okay. uh, and I want to ask, how often can you detect the etiology of heart failure from pathologic specimens? Uh, we have uh, the uh, pathologists from Asan Medical Center and Samsung Medical Center. So if you have any uh, comment, please do it, do it whenever you are ready. Uh, I personally uh, have, don't ha make any uh, spe registered, uh, uh, sy registering system for this direct cardiomyopathy. But uh, maybe about 1 in 20, or about less than 5%, I, I can uh, give some additional information in addition to dilated cardiomyopathy. But as you, as you uh, suggested, uh, we do uh, make uh, some histologic section and uh, make, uh, examine the uh, specimen. But we don't do genetic study for this uh, or some sort of that. So if, it is, uh, if some, some organ, some institution wants to get more resected heart specimen, we are willingly uh, support their uh, collection. So if there is any uh, request, we will uh, su uh, support. I'll, I'll make one, uh, one comment. Uh, if, the, uh, if Dr. Uh, Chi is still here, I'm curious uh, a little bit about uh, the management uh, of the donor heart, uh, what uh, the preference is in Korea for preservation solution. And also, I would comment that uh, in the video, I don't know if it was the same uh, procedure that, uh, that Dr. Chi uses, but we often uh, do warm reperfusion uh, through a leukocyte filter prior to unclamping the heart. And we think there are certain advantages uh, in doing that if they ever uh, uh, consider doing that as part of their uh, procedure. Radiologist said the um, MRI can the, check the difference between normal heart and dilated cardiomyopathy. So do you have a special stain for the, something like that in microscopy? For the dilated cardiomyopathy, the radiologist said uh, the MRI can show the ring the between the endocardium and the epicardium. No, I don't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> so if you have any suggestion, please give us. <coughs> May I ask a question? Yes. Uh, this, uh, <coughs> I'm Dr. Park from Sejong Cardiovascular Center. And uh, this patient showed the left bundle branch block and the fibrillation before transplantation. So. As you um, <coughs> mentioned, there is some, you can check the conduction system for this heart, mm -hmm. from the heart specimen, and is there any difference or any change of the, for the left bundle branch block? Uh, yeah, we, we try to do, but it's not possible to correlate this, uh, the morphological feature in histological conduction system to the uh, real arrhythmic feature. But we have one case report made from transplant heart, and we could find a fibrotic lesion in the left bundle branch area of conduction system. So we, report, we reported in the case report in the literature. And, but, but we will try to find some any specific morphological lesion in conduction system. And that's a very good practice for us to enjoy the uh, different shape and different morphology of conduction system, particularly for this kind of uh, hypertrophied heart or sometimes fibrotic lesion in, in this uh, myocardium will, will give some, uh, some 
pathology in some specimen. So I actually did have one other question. So from a clinical point of view, when we initially saw the echo, it looked thin walled and dilated, but now we actually see that the person has uh, hypertrophy. Are you able to discern if the heart actually comes out with thin dilated walls, what the myopathy is actually due to? Is that more common in familial dilated myopathies or does it always look like this? I do, mm -hmm. I don't see thinner, thinning of my cardiom, even in dilated cardiomyopathy. More often, it, it is rather unusual to become thicker than usual, but usually the thickness of the septum and free wall of left ventricle remain the same because the hypertrophy and dilatation comes together. Maybe it's a little bit different between the diastolic and systolic phase. 